Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon. You guys love the sugar bowls that we invented a few weeks ago so much that I'm doing sugar bowls part two with all of your suggestions, questions and a danger warning. If you didn't see part one, then to catch you up, basically you heat together sugar and water and glucose syrup to 150 degrees C and then add the colouring and flavouring of your choice and I'll put all the recipe details on the howtocookthat.net website for you and there's a link to that below. And then you pour that over a balloon filled with water, the water helps to stop it from bursting and then you end up with these beautiful sugar bowls. But let me go through some of your questions and suggestions. Number one, can you do mini bowls? Sure, let's try using water balloons, they're mini. I've rubbed each of these with a little cooking oil to make it easier to get the sugar off. Once that's set hard, just give a little cut and let the water drain out of the balloon and you get a gorgeous little sugar bowl. Number two, can you make a giant sugar bowl? Oh my goodness, this ended up in a series of unfortunate events, otherwise known as fails. First up, I filled a giant balloon with water and then while trying to move it to a bowl, well, you can probably guess what's going to happen next. Yes, it burst and the water went everywhere, all over me and everywhere. So after cleaning that up, I decided to try with just a little bit of water in the bottom to keep it steady on the bowl and the rest filled with air. I poured some of the sugar over the top. Now to me, this looked a little bit worrisome. So I stepped back. Oh! I thought that was gonna happen. Wow. What a mess, oh, let's go back here. Here the kitchen was clean, brand new, and then the balloon pops, the sugar hovers neatly in the air, and then explodes all over the new kitchen. As soon as this cools, it sets hard, so Dave and I spent the next hour scrubbing sugar off the floor, the walls, the counter, and let me warn you, this is extremely dangerous. So do not try this at home unless your balloon is filled <laughs> with water. But for you guys, I will try again to make a giant sugar bowl. I do not know why I'm doing this. Get your hot sugar syrup, stir in the color, and then absolute key at this point is to let it cool down until there are no bubbles left in it. And now I'm going to pour it over the top of the balloon. Please don't pop, please don't pop, please don't pop. Success, it didn't pop, yay. So leave it to go hard. I still don't want you to try this at home without water in your balloon unless you're going to wear full safety gear and goggles on your eyes and everything. It's very dangerous. Once that is fully hard, use scissors to make a tiny hole and slowly and patiently let out all the water and the air from the balloon until you're left with a beautiful giant sugar bowl. So yes, you can make one. Let's fill it up with lollies. Lots of lollies. A few more lollies. Oh no, that was too many lollies. It broke under the weight. Oh my goodness. One more giant sugar bowl. Okay. Pour over the sugar syrup. Did you, did you see that? Did you see the balloon expand there? Let me show you again. Watch the distance between the top of the screen and the balloon. You can see the balloon gets bigger and that's because gases expand when they get hot. So the air inside the balloon is getting hot and expanding. Now I'm going to add a second coat over the top to make the sugar bowl stronger. I like the way the sugar slowly winds its way down. This one's looking pretty cool. But when I let the air out of it, I let it down really fast because it was like the fourth one I'd made and it broke. Well, it's just too bad. There are no more giant sugar bowls today. Let's just pretend that is what this one is supposed to look like, like a quarter of a giant balloon. <laughs> and let's fill it up with candy anyway. Even broken, I still think it looks pretty and amazing. So moving on, number three, can I add stuff to the sugar? Well, my favorite thing to add to hard sugar is almonds, and you can just mix them in while it's still hot and then tip it over the balloon. It will be yummy, but not quite as pretty as a plain sugar bowl. And I wanna eat this with chocolate, so let's line the inside of this one with chocolate as well, just to make it extra yummy. You could add something like edible glitter to the inside. You probably can't see that very well on camera. So what I'll do is I'll just line that one with chocolate too. Everyone's gonna to wanna to eat these ones now. There you go. And now you can see that beautiful shiny glitter on it. Let's take this little one and brush the inside of it with edible gold luster dust. 
I like the way this one looks from the outside. It's kind of pearl-like on the outside and then golden on the inside. I really like that. Number four, can you make whole balloons? Well, let's try. I can't answer all these questions without experimenting because I've only just invented sugar bowls. I haven't done all of these things with them before, so let's give it a go. To make it cover more of the balloon, we're gonna to have to hang the balloons and then dip them in the sugar, trying to cover all of the sides. And these are water balloons and they are filled with water to make it safer. And then if you hang it close to the tray, the weight of the sugar will pull it down. So it's just gonna sit in the runoff there and make like a base. Or you can hang it higher and let it drip off so you end up with a smooth round base. This is what the ones that were sitting on the bottom look like. They're pretty cool, they look nice with a little dessert in. And this is the ones with the drip. I think they look a bit like tulips, these ones. I quite like those. But my favourite one is when you hang it just above so you end up with something that looks a little bit like a wine glass. It's a bit like creating artwork. You can experiment and have fun and make something totally unique. Number five, they look a bit like jellyfish. I thought that too, just flip it upside down, add some white fondant and some black sixlets for eyes and you've got little jellyfish or Pac-Man ghosts. Number six, can you make the drips thicker? Hmm, well I think the best way to do that would be to let the sugar cool more before you pour it on so the mixture is thicker. But now it's so thick that we're getting no drips at all. So let's force it to drip by adding some extra. That seems to be working, but once we take the balloon off, the bowl seems a bit clunky to me and you can see where we've added the drips. I'm not loving that one. Number seven. I tried it and it didn't set hard. Well, this is a problem Rob from Threadbanger had as well when he tried to make sugar bowls. You need to use a candy thermometer. I don't think I did this right. At this point, I necessarily don't know what the candy thermometer is being used for, but I'm sure that maybe it'll come in, it'll come in handy. Use it to measure the temperature of your sugar. It's got to get up to 150C. If it doesn't get up to that temperature, it's just not going to set. Right, <laughs> that is what attempt number one. Apparently this thing is pretty crucial. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed Sugar Bowls part two. Subscribe to How To Cook That for more crazy sweet creations. Turn on the notifications bell by clicking on the bell so that you know when I post a new video. I love talking with you guys in the comments for the first hour or two after a new video goes up. Click here for the latest video, here for the recipe, and here for more desserts. Make it a great week by doing something lovely for someone else, and I'll see you on Friday.